Hey everyone, this is Peter and Lori with Prophetic Watcher in 88. Before we get started, please hit like and subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. Here's to be honest, you know what happens? When you guys hit subscribe and make sure that you subscribe and then you hit a like or you put a comment or you actually do a share, you know, let's say it happens, it kicks in an algorithm and all of a sudden it says, hey, people actually want to pay attention and hear these people. So they're going to go bloop, 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 and then it goes up and then all of a sudden more people get to hear about Jesus Christ. That's how it works. Anyway, hi, Lori. Why are we back? <laughs> oh, gosh, because you couldn't do this without me. You tried to do this video. Yesterday. And he looked so... Pathetic. I mean, he was all, hey guys. <laughs> listen, listen. And She's I was like, right. Wow. I, okay, That's if I had the so guts, depressing. I would do, um, uh, what do you call those? Bloopers. But honestly, this is not a waste of time. Listen, if I, because we have because so it's many. all of our mistakes. Oh, right. It's, and it's funny. You would be, your pants would be wet and smelly. You'd be falling off the couch. Honey, I mean, uh, come on. We've done some funny stuff. Anyway, that last one was funny. Smile. <laughs> Here we go. Anyway, here's a reason why we're back. There's a reason why we're back. We just want to encourage you guys. We want to encourage you guys. Because we have both been down the last two days. Right. We're going to be a little here. We're raw. We're real. It's Petey and Lori time. No, <laughs> but we're real. So here's what happened. Yesterday, uh, yesterday, I came in here to the office and uh, in the morning, early in the morning, God got me back up and it's okay. I'm not fighting with God. I'm like, okay, God, whatever, whatever you want to do because I, I don't know what's going on. So here I am. Came in the office. I literally, I'm being honest, I just said, I don't understand. Can you help me? And I was down. I and I felt I felt um battle weary. If you've ever felt that battle weary, I felt like drained. I felt just um uh, yeah. empty. That and I'm not empty, but I felt you felt just Heavy. weary. Yeah, weary. In, in the army, they teach you to be able to go um, when you're at that that point you can go you can still go further well I was at the the end of it and I fell down before God discouraged and all of a sudden I, I just I, I literally poured my heart out to God and God lifted me up it, it was it's quite amazing and I he led me to his word he led me directly into his word and he began to encourage me and I got so excited and so in saying that I was like Lori Lori Here's what God did. And I, here's the notes, here's the notes. And God was like, ah. And she's like, I'm trying to wake up. Hold on. And I'm being honest. And it was funny. It was funny. So I had to bottle it up. And I did. And so later in the day, I go, okay, Lord, it's time. I'm, I'm going to get this out now because God, you know, it's just, it's all something I'll do. And she said, okay, go ahead and do it. So I tried, one of those things, I tried to do it and found out. What did I find out? You need me. I need Lori. I need her. She needs me. We are a team. And I, I'm not joking. This is a great revelation that God encouraged us with, but he wants to do it through us because he's teaching us something. We're still learning, guys. Yeah. We are still learning. He, he seems like he's always wanted us to work together. Like, right. <clears throat> I mean, like, we both have parts and we both bring our parts. Absolutely. That we get from him and Absolutely. we're separate with him yeah you know yeah it's kind of cool yeah and it is very cool and so when that comes together and god wants it together and so that's what we're doing uh, we're just being honest now again in in <clears throat> everything we do or say please 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 understand we want to lead everyone to jesus christ he is the focused he is preeminent he is the focal point he's everything all in all okay so everything we do or say we are praying that it leads you right to jesus christ yeah we 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 are not I'm going to say this, okay, I'm going to say this the best way I can. We are not putting our hope on a date, okay, as being what God has called us to do and we're functioning as watchmen in the body of Christ, we have to announce what God is showing us. And so I don't care what anyone else thinks, we have to share that. And in sharing that, we are encouraged, we want to share that encouragement. Right. And, and, and so we're bringing that before the body, before the ecclesia. Take it before God and say, God, is this of you, right? Is this of you? Test it. Test every spirit. And that's what we're going to do together. We're the ecclesia right. together. Remember, guys? And through this whole process, even just especially this last year, because everybody is so, they know it's so close that we have really been studying the feasts. Right. And how important they are. They're important to God. And Absolutely. he wants to share them. They're his feasts. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. So we've been learning all about it. You know? <laughs> 
We're in the Feast of Tabernacles. And it's fantastic. Honestly, the learning journey. Yeah. Can I, I say? I told P. I said, we should go put a tent up in the backyard. Okay. Now, if you know us, that's a funny statement because <laughs> I'm not a tent kind of guy. But she loves the outdoors and tents. Now, I love that. So, anyway. We can make a fort. We'll do something. Maybe. <laughs> we'll. Okay. Lord willing, we'll do something. Anyway, thanks for doing that. You're taking me offline. Squirrel. Okay. Now, listen. I love you. You're my squirrel. Oh, never mind. We'll go. Th okay. <laughs> listen. Here we go. Listen, <laughs> I got to say something. Okay. Uh, God has been showing us things about faith, about heroes of faith. Remember, we talked about Hebrews and that whole, you know, what faith is. And that was amazing. Honestly, I learned something. That was, that was awesome. Just so you guys know, side note, in our last video, if you haven't seen it, please go see it. This is going to be a shorter video. But that one, for some reason, um, uh, the powers that be sort of put it under wraps. But... Yeah. It's, it's got a great message of what faith is, and it's, it's awesome. In saying that, in learning that, thinking of one of my personal heroes of faith, I have to tell you, one of my heroes of faith, I, got, I just got, I have to share this, is this person right here. <sighs> this person right here, and for, I, I can't get all into it, but for many different reasons, she is a hero to me in the realm of faith. How God moves in her, through her, in, 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 let's say, over our marriage, in times where I have went, yeah, I don't think that's possible. She said, that's not only possible, but God's going to double it. And I'm not kidding. And God did. Okay, so, and that's, I can go example, you know, just in the spirit realm, in the physical realm, just seeing her go through the four births of our children. Ah. The strength, the t just the warrior, the all that. So I, no, 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 no. I have to, because in saying that one of my heroes of faith, in the spiritual realm, what we're doing right now, we need to activate what's in all of us right now. This is Lori. She's flawed. I'm Peter. I'm flawed. Christ in us is perfect. Yeah. He is righteous. He is holy. He is almighty God. And he uses weakness mm -hmm. and infirmity like this to perfect his dunamis power. So I'm stating it like that. So it's not about, oh, look how great they are. No, 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 no. We are flawed individuals. But this is one of my heroes of faith for many different reasons. Sweet. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're sweet. Now, in saying that, um, in this time that we're in right now, all of you are feeling it, okay? I, I, I've even, I'm, I'm reading comments even. i, I, I got to share this part. We're making good time. We're making good time. I've seen some um, heavy, heavy hearts in the comments. You guys out there, I've seen some heavy hearts. And so this is meant to encourage the heavy heart. All of us are going through trials and tribulations. All of us are at our wits end. All of us are banging our heads against the wall saying, wow! What? When? Where? You know, all of us. All of us are doing that, right? Oh, come on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, this, God is saying, I want to encourage you. Now, again, this is not uh, putting a finger on a, a date. This is, we're going to explore mm -hmm. one of God's amazing feasts mm -hmm. together. That's what we're going to do. It's interesting because I had to drive down to Fresno. <clears throat> and, um, of course, this whole valley in California is all agriculture. Oh, yeah. And um, the, o over a bridge were all these um, harvesting trucks oh. because we have a lot of almonds. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so all these harvesting trucks and what they do is they shake the trees oh. and then the almonds fall. It knocks the L out of them and then they become <laughs> almonds. <laughs> you get it? It knocks the L That's out of them? The joke. Local joke. It's funny. Go ahead. Anyway. That but the dust. Oh. So anyway, when I saw them crossing over, and this was just Saturday. Go ahead. And the, I said, Lord, it is still harvest season. It is still harvest season. We are still in yep. the time of the harvest. Yep. We're about ready to learn about the last feast because I don't think Hanukkah is a, I'm not ca considered listen. one of God's feasts, but, but I'm not sure. No. Go ahead. Finish your statement. No, mm -hmm. you. But anyway, uh, and here we are, you know, all year we've learned about feasts. Um, what they mean and what they're about and you know that God love is full of joy. Oh yes. He loves the party. Celebration, yes, party he loves all the time, party all the time. <laughs> I mean, yes. And in a whole year he has more than I think America does. Oh my god. <laughs> Any more parties right, and but, feasts and Right. And so I can't wait to feast because I don't know about you but none of the food here tastes good. Oh yeah, that's a whole it's different so, stuff, but yes. 
We're well, waiting like, for the it's real. It's funny because like when I get Go good bread, Go ahead. I like I could just eat the bread because oh. I can't find. You know, I miss a really good bread. like. Mm hmm. Um, well, you know what I really miss? It's tell me. a really good salami sandwich. There you go. You know, like back, yes, you with love those soft bread. Oh, uh, the mustard. I just can't trust any food anymore. <laughs> it's okay. Hold on. Encourage mm -hmm. Anyway, Brad, but I digress. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? We're gonna start the video. <laughs> Here we go. No, no, she's not sorry. Stuff your sorries oh, no, in a sack. I'm sorry that I can I can get dark pretty quick. Yeah, it's okay. You can get light just as quick. So we're turning on the light. <laughs> Here we go. Now, I, these are notes. Okay, so again, we're going to do one of those no slides. I have my notes. We're going to talk. We're going to chat. You guys are real. We're real. We're having fun. Make comments. Okay, <laughs> let us know we're real. Anyway, we are, I got to say it like this. We're just two nobody Gentiles that know nothing. We're, we're learning. God has been teaching these two Gentiles, which means we are not Jews. We're not Jewish. We are Gentiles, not a Jew. <laughs> so, uh, we are learning. Yeah. In learning that, the, uh, we know the main, the top seven, bam, okay? The menorah, right? The menorah starts it with Passover, unleavened bread, and you know, of grain, wine, oil, which is these trumpets, and you go, Day of Atonement, and you have tabernacles at the end of the menorah. Let's hang out in the booth. Let's hang <laughs> <laughs> so we are, as God, as God is showing us how to hang out in a booth and what it means <laughs> and all of that, uh, we want to go over, I, I saw some amazing things. So we're going to get right into that. We're going to go over the scripture. We're going to get into that. We're going to discuss it and have some fun. Now, in Leviticus 23, 23, 2, 3. What? The year we're in. Okay. Leviticus 23 outlines beautifully the fee, all the feasts, but the Feast of Tabernacles at the end. Mm -hmm. And it talks about the seven days and what it's for, and then it describes, boom, the eighth day, right? Okay, now that is, it's all said, boom, Moses got through God. God, through Moses, gives it to Israel. Okay, and it's beautiful, all that. I discovered, this is pretty cool, and this is what we're going to go over. Prophet Nehemiah. Nehemiah? Yes, Nehemiah. Why is he so famous? Well, Nehemiah... He, remember, the, okay, so from Moses and uh, Joshua, Yeshua, uh, they had the feast and all that, and then you skip forward, whoop, all the way to, the, to Nehemiah. So after they've been exiled and all that stuff, they're coming back, Nehemiah and them are rebuilding the wall. They're rebuilding the wall. It's being built. Now it's ready to go. So all of a sudden, they discover the word of God. What? And they beg, and we're going to get into that part. So, surprise ending. In Leviticus 23, is the feasts are described. The Feast of Tabernacles is described. In Nehemiah 8, it's restored. The Feast of Tabernacles is restored. And that's what we want to get into, because that's how I feel the prophetic picture is right now. And we're going to talk about that, because I think it's really, really cool. So, you ready? Yes. Okay, let's get right into this. Here we go. We're going to keep it simple, because I'm stupid. Not going to get a kiss, kiss. Okay. That's just funny jokes right there, guys. Come on, keep up with me. All right, here we go. This right here is Nehemiah chapter eight. We are not. I'm not just gonna. I'm not gonna read it all just perfectly. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna highlight some things and we're gonna have a little discuss, and it's shun <laughs> discussion about what's going on because we want to make sure we understand this. And I just honestly, when I started reading the story again, it really started uh, highlighting and blew my mind in some areas. So let's just start. The very first though, this is after they built the wall. Nehemiah, all those guys, and lists all the people that are there. It's Nehemiah and Ezra and all the Levites and all the people. So it already lists all those people and numbers them. I'm sure. Go read it yourselves, guys, because everything matters in there. Like the Nehemiah numbers, seven? right? Yeah, so, so chapters 1 through 7. Okay. It's pretty cool <laughs> stuff. But we're going to come at 8. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. Now at 8, since we're talking about the 8th day. So right here, the people, all the people right here, and the people gathered themselves together as one man. Let me pause there for a second. All the people came together as one man, the unity, where unity is what the bless, right? God will bless. He sends his blessing. Mm -hmm. So they were dwelling in unity and they came as one man and they were basically begging um, as bring us the word of God. We want the uh, Torah, the law of Moses. We want it. And, and, and they were begging for God's word. That's what it says right there. So Ezra and them, the priests right here, they came, and it tells you right there where they were by. I'm, again, I'm not going to read every, I'm going to sort of paraphrase as we're reading, but you can read it if you want. Pause and read. <laughs> Pause and read. Okay, so I know it's okay. Don't worry. I'm not crazy. I, I was tested. And Ezra, verse 2, 
And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation. There it is. Before all the men, all the women, all that could understand, he brought it forth. When? On the first day of the seventh month. What month are we in right now? Seventh. Seventh month, Tishri. So this was the Feast of Trumpets, obviously. <laughs> right? So this is when they're discovering. They're begging for the word. The word comes out. Bam. And they, they deliver it to the people. Now, <clears throat> verse 3. All day they read the word to the people. Okay? So, and those that, they, that, that could understand and the ears of the people were attentive to the book of the law. So they were there. They were attentive. They were ready. It reminds me of like Bereans. They were like, give it to me. Give it to me. I want to hear it. I got to hear it. They wanted the word of God. Because they didn't have like, we have Bibles. Right. Right. We're right. carrying it around. Everybody get your tablets out. Ta -da -da -da. Click over it. No, no, no. Right. <laughs> so they were begging. So boom, they're delivering the word of God. Now I'm going to skip for this. This talks about all the people that are there. Okay. Now, verse five right here. And Ezra opened the book inside of all the people, and when the people, uh, and it went, when it was open, the people stood up. Wow, and they want it. I'm just, I'm painting that picture, guys. Do you desire Jesus Christ? Is this your heart with the Word of God? When the Word of God was presented, they were hungry. They, they desired. That's the picture yeah. I get. Okay, so. Boom, they stood up. Now, look at this. Verse 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm going to go into the Hebrew in a second, but I'll read it here first, but then i got to jump into the Hebrew because there's some cool nuggets that we got to understand. So, verse 6. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered. Amen, amen and amen. All right. <laughs> it sounds like Bobby. Amen and amen. With they, Look at this. They lifted up their hands. They bowed their heads, and they worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. They, they, they were worshiping Almighty God. Okay, now, verse 7, I'm going to leave you with this. Yeshua caused the people to understand the law. What? Yes. Yeshua caused the people to understand all the Torah. I'm going to hold that for one second. So they read the book, the law, the law of God distinctly, and, they, and we're going to get to this in a second, and gave sense and caused them to understand the reading. Okay. And then in verse 9, I just want to give you this last one here. Um, the people, when they when they heard the law and they heard the word of God, they began to weep. And you could under, maybe understand why. They heard the perfect word and law of God and they looked at themselves and in comparison, they don't compare. They don't measure up. So they began to weep and mourn. <laughs> they began to weep and mourn. And look at all, when they heard, they began to weep and mourn. Then on verse 10, uh, well, hold up. They began to weep and mourn, and said, and then they said, "This is a holy day unto the Lord God. Mourn not and weep not, because again, all the people were weeping and mourning. Uh, it's going to make sense in a second, a little bit more when we get into the Hebrew. But you have that sense when they saw the perfection of God, they began to weep and mourn and say, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. I mean, just, and, and that, we're not worthy. Think about that. We're not worthy. Okay. Now, verse six. This is the same, but in the Hebrew, from right to left, guys, right to left. And Ezra, remember, we're reading in circles right here. And Ezra blessed the Lord. Who did he bless? What is hidden there? The Aleph and the Tav, oh, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, Jesus Christ himself. And Ezra blessed Jesus Christ, the Lord, yod heh vav -Hey, Elohim, right? Almighty God. So we're clear on who we're talking about here. Almighty God. And there's the hidden Aleph and Tav, who is Jesus Christ. Now, and for those of you that maybe new subscribers might not know, when you see this in the Old Testament, the Aleph and the Tav, that's the Hebrew characters. It, 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 it represents Jesus Christ, and it's not translated in English. It is left untranslated. Just letting you know. And it's roughly 7,000 times or so in the Old Testament. Okay, moving on. So, Ezra blessed Almighty God. Okay, and the people answered, like you said, amen and amen. All right. <clears throat> now, right here in verse 7, and Yeshua, and it mentions all these people, okay, the, all the ones that were with him, but and Yeshua, <laughs> this is so cool, caused the people, right here, to understand the law. Who is doing, right there, another, the hidden Aleph and Tav, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ the Messiah, right here, caused the people to understand the law so that they could get it. The light came on. A revelation was, is happening in these verses right here. Right. Right. Yeah. A revelation is happening in these verses right here. And as we go into nine, so then you start to see, and when they read, now these, I'm not going to do it here, but if you went into this word uh, distinctly, 
and gay sense understand you would uh, you would see a revelation you would see the veil being removed so that they could see almighty god in the word and it became alive to them okay we're we're just english we're the hebrew is yeah. so beautiful amazing and deep so if you can understand what's going on here this was a point in time go ahead this is a specific point right. in time where all these people got the revelation of who right who God, God right, in the Word. Mm -hmm. Now, oh remember God. how God moved before Jesus Christ came. He put his hand upon individuals, okay? The, the Holy Spirit didn't disperse. There wasn't an outpouring yet. So, his hand was on Nehemiah, on Ezra, on the Levites, the ones that were doing the teachings, okay? And so, Jesus Christ, through them, taught the people so that they could see their God. Oh, 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 yes, come on, high five. Okay, you understand, you get that, you get the, do you see why I want to do this? Okay, that's why I wanted to show the you this. The came on. What light? Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> the light, what light? <laughs> I got it. Okie doke. Whew, we're good, we're good. Okay, that's verse nine. And yeah, same thing. So I just, that's, the, that's what I wanted to show you. And again, at the end right here, where they said, you know, hey, this is a holy day, don't mourn. It's a holy day, don't weep. Rejoice. Rejoice, and look at this. But when they saw, when the people saw Jesus Christ in the scriptures, in the law, the perfection, they didn't measure up. We're not worthy. So the leader said, yo, no. And this, this is verse 10. Oh, then comes verse 10. Well, now we're going to click back over to here. Okay, stay with me, guys, stay with me. So they just got done mourning. They said, don't mourn. Verse 10 comes now, okay? <clears throat> so their leaders, their teachers right now, they're saying, wait, 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 wait. It says, go away, eat the fat, and drink the sweet. What? That means, go potty, baby. It's potty, potty, potty. And in fact, if there's people here and they're not ready, they don't have prepared, they don't have stuff, get your stuff, go with them, and then all of you potty Share. together. Mm -hmm. Share, celebrate, mm -hmm. celebrate. That's what they told the people right here in verse 10. Celebrate. Right. Celebrate. <laughs> I love it. You're Dance amazing. to the music. There you go. Dance to the music. And that's what they did. And this, and this is what they told them. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. And that's where that verse comes in right yes. there. Right in the middle of that. Okay. Yeah. We good so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's verse 10. Now, verse 11. All right. We're almost there, guys. <clears throat> verse 11. So the Levites, okay, they, they basically, it says they still, they calmed all the people down, okay? They calmed them all down, and they, they told them, hold your peace, okay, and all this stuff. And then they said, go do what we said. So then in verse 12, the people said, hey, we're going to go party, because they said go party, so we're going to go party. <laughs> so that's what they did. I'm, I'm being funny. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not taking this lightly. Understand, sometimes the word solemn assembly is used in the scripture here with, with this word. And, and I'm going to show you later, but it doesn't mean, oh, because it's right right here. Why are you weeping? Why are you mourning? Why are you sad? Why are your faces down? They said, go celebrate. This is a holy day unto the Lord. Okay, do you see the contrast? Okay. So, verse 12, they went and potted. All right. And look at this. And okay, let me just read this. Verse 12, and all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions, right, share, and to make great mirth? <laughs> I had to go look it up. Now listen, now I know what mirth means, but, but <clears throat> great <know>. mirth, <sighs> it, it is a, it, a joy, a, a, it's, a, it's a, okay, mirth is a, a great, a joy, an excitement, a celebration. Just mirth, a celebration, joy, joy, re rejoicing, joy, big time. But they put the word great in front of it. So you take that, and now I'm thinking like David when he danced and spun out of his clothes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's the kind of celebrating that these people are doing right here. Okay, I'm not. We don't even know. Right. We don't even know. We don't. We're going to know. We're going. But right now, mm -hmm. we're. That's what the word says. So are we clear? Unfortunately, our um, minds are right. tainted. Yeah. With when you think of partying, you think of it all I know. negative. Yeah, yeah. I guess we don't know how as right. people to celebrate, rejoice, rejoicing. and celebrate. And right. fest, fest. Okay. Of course. Yeah. <clears throat> no, no, you're right. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna get there though. Yeah. Yeah. It's a new way. It's a new way. Okay. Calm down. So 
with great celebration because the people had understood the words. Time out. So when the people understood the word of God that it pertained to them, great celebration broke out in the camp. Let's just say it like that. I think that's how we're going to say it. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Now, this is the, the last section here. Okay, so they're in a celebrating mood. <clears throat> now, all of a sudden, verse, verse uh, 13, we're going to get to the second day. So verse, that was all the first day. They, they went crazy. Now, the second day, when they were gathered together, the chief, uh, the chi they all came back together, and the priest, they, 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 they gave them the word of God some more, and they helped them understand even more. And verse 14, this is what's funny. This is where the people found that in the law, and I'm guessing it's Leviticus 23, in the law, they found right here where they are commanded by God for the children of Israel for the feast of the seventh month, that the children of Israel should live in booths. They should be dwelling in tents in the seventh month. That's what, and they went, what? What? First we're under blender, now we're saving lives? What? what? That's what's going on right here. And go ahead. What, and then um, the mount, the transfiguration. Right. And they saw them, and he's, they said, "Oh, should we make them a booth?" Right. Because it was okay. the season of the tabernacles. Right. Uh, hand raised, hand raised. Has anybody ever wondered when they were reading the scriptures originally, and you're reading, and and Jesus is on the mount. By the way, is Mount Hermon. Whole another story, but wink, wink. Jesus is awesome. On Mount Hermon, there's a transfiguration. You have the law, Moses, and you have the prophets, Isaiah, with Jesus. And what's Peter say? Oh, hey, Lord! Elijah. That's what I said. Elijah, what I say? Isaiah. Forgive me. She, that's why she's here. I, yes, uh, and Moses, yes, the law and the prophets are both there. You know who they yeah, are. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. So mm -hmm. Peter goes, hey, let's make a booth for each one of them. Mm -hmm. As a Christian, I read that, and I'm like, oh, silly Peter. <laughs> And I kept reading. I don't have no clue what Peter because was talking about. Because we didn't about. know about the feast. We had no idea. These two Gentiles are going, what booth is he talking about? Right? Mm -hmm. Now we know during the Feast of Trumpets, after the Feast of Trumpets, during the Tabernacles, they're hanging out. Jesus does this. Peter wants to build booths. Of course, Peter's missing the bigger picture, but he learns later. Yeah. But again, during the same time. Okay. Now. That's right here. You got us on the track of that one. Um, yeah, seventh month feast. Yes, so we're right here in the seventh month. Fifteen. Okay. So they went and they're supposed to, um, they, they learned in the word, go proclaim everywhere, all throughout the land, and gather <laughs> olive branches, and pine branches, and myrtle branches, and palm branches, and all the thick tree branches, and bring them and build shelters and tents or booths with them. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I have, I have two thoughts going crazy in my head. Here we go. She's got two thoughts, guys. Get ready. Number one. Number one. Let's go back to talking about the Elijah and Moses. Right. And, and make it. Elijah and Moses. Them. Elijah and Moses. Well, okay. Here's a thought that the witnesses come around the time of wow. tabernacles Right, you know. right, right. Now, again, we're guessing, guys. We're guessing. Just a we're guessing. We're just, just talking. a okay. prophetic picture. It could okay. be a prophetic You're picture right. that they come during Why the Why would they be the there? Why would they appear to him right. during tabernacles? <clears throat> the second thing. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, you listed all this wood, okay? All these things. These trees. And just Five. at the beginning, just a couple of days ago, that sycamore gap tree was chopped down. Oh, that's right. And um, isn't that weird? That is weird. Do you guys know about that? It's it's a it's, 300 year it's old tree. News, you can look it up yeah. online. It's it's called the Sycamore Gap Tree. It's that a lot was of like movies. 300 years old. It's in the northern England. Robin Hood and, in the movie Robin Hood. Go ahead. Anyway, some 16 year old went and chopped it down. But I think it's interesting that the Lord is saying, "Go get pieces of all these different trees," and that just happened to be chopped down. Right. It could be another Whoa, picture. I just got that of. I just got but that, Lori. No, it's no, sad no. that the tree got chopped. It is. Do you understand what she's saying? A prophetic picture. We're, we're reading right here. Go get the trees. Go get the branches. Get them and bring them. I know it's sad that the tree went down, but is that a prophetic picture of what we're reading? I don't know. It just hit me. You guys comment. Let, let us know. Okay. That, that's great. Thank you. Was that the second point? Yep. That was two. There we go. <laughs> that was two. One, two. We're on verse 15. That was the trees. Okay. So they went out. Right. 
So the people <clears throat> went out, got all those types of trees, and I'm sure if you dug into this, each one of those trees means something. Definitely. And it's five, there's grace. Right. So anyway, so yes, they went and got it. Now, verse 16. Uh, so look at this. They went forth and they did that and they went all throughout the place even in the courts of the house of god you know the courts where you know the, the outer courts they put the booze the tents all over the place all over the land that's awesome can you imagine the sight i'm just saying these that they're excited they're happy they just found this news they went out and got all that and they're bringing up and they're building all these booze during the tabernacles mm -hmm. i think this is just exciting what Nothing. Okay, so mm -hmm. they, you don't really get a good picture of it until like I think we saw it in the Chosen where they had right. the booth set up. Okay, say what you want about the Chosen, I don't care. <laughs> they, 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 for me, it gave me some great insight into some how visuals. things were back then yeah. on certain things and doing the tabernacles and Ooh. booths during the feasts. It really helped me understand a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, that was pretty cool. Okay, so again, uh, so they went out and did this everywhere, and it mentions again the Water Gate and the Gate of Ephraim. Now, again, I know America is prophetically seen as Ephraim. They go, it's just saying. Okay, anyway, and the waters of life. Anyway, there's all kinds of things there, but we're going to keep it simple for now. Well, I mean, Watergate. I know, and Watergate, <laughs> I know. I, I, let's, but we're going to stay here. You're right, guys. We could go so many directions, but we're going to keep it right here. Verse 17. And all the congregation of them, all the people that were had come again, out of captivity now pause out of ca <clears throat> yes we're free in christ we are body soul and spirit we are saved being saved and going to be saved let's keep it simple our last bondage our last captivity our last chain is this corrupt mortal body we are going to get immortality we're going to be like Christ. I mean, physically. So this last part of right. a captivity will be <clears throat> gone. The old wineskin is burst and destroyed, and we will be like Jesus is when we see him. That's what the Bible says. Right? It's funny because, like, I had a dream oh, that God. when we, we when we were, I was, like, we, looking at our skin. I right, kept right, looking. Right. It was a rapture I, dream. I go, look, Daddy, look at our skin. Oh, I remember that. And it was I, like, the only thing I can describe it is that it just looked um, a little bit more translucent. Right. Right. Huh. So I mean, it, like, you yeah. can see veins and bones and stuff. I no, 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 like I know, that, but, but I, it, I can only imagine. So <clears> this <throat> last captivity is going to be broken and destroyed, okay? So all of us that got out of captivity, all of them that went out of captivity, made booths, made these tents, made these shelters, and they sat under them. <coughs> now look at this. For since the days of Yeshua, son of Nun, now we know that's Joshua, but since we know the <coughs> Yeshua, the son of Nun, Unto that day, the children of Israel had not done so. And there was great gladness. Again, you see the picture? They, great gladness. Rejoice greatly. Be happy. Be, I mean, you know, bounce around. You see, I mean, there's a, there's a theme here. And I know, guys, you, I know I'm going to get comments. I'm too goofy. I don't care. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm thrilled. <laughs> I want to be glad. I, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I need strength right now. Okay. So. 18. Here we go. Also, day by day, from the first day unto the last day, he read the book of the law, the Torah, the word of God, <laughs> and they kept the feast for seven days. And on the eighth day, that's what we're going to talk about, on the eighth day, well, and again, with a solemn assembly according to manner or the ordinances. Now, I'm, I'm going to break that down. I'm going to break that down real quick right now. So what I want to go from here, so we're going to focus on the eighth day, okay? Focus on the eighth day. Here we go. Now, on the eighth day, what do I have here? Oh, we read that one. Oh, oh just so you guys know. So this is Levit Le Leviticus 23. It describes all the feasts here. Um, and, and what I want to say here, look at this. The Lord spoke again to Moses saying, speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, the Lord's appointed times. We know these are Moedim. We're going to talk about that, a, a, a Moed. These are God's feasts. They are eternal. They are forever. He shared them with us. So they're not man's. They're not the Jewish feasts or Hebrews or they are God's feasts. And that's important that we need to know. And I'm talking about the top, these seven, the seven feasts that we've named are God's feasts. Okay. Now. So he really literally went through this year mm -hmm. teaching us the feasts. <laughs> exactly. And now we're at the last one. It blows my mind. I, the menorah. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I was going to show that picture, but yes, I, you're absolutely right. And we shot. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
Moving on, but she's right. So anyway, here's all this. At the very end of Levit Leviticus 23, uh, right here in 33, starts the Festival of Tabernacles. Now, it describes everything about tabernacles right there, and it's beautiful and it's gorgeous. We're not going to go there right now because we just went over it in Nehemiah 8. But this last thing right here, where Moses declares the sons of Israel the appointed times of the Lord. I do want to see that in the Hebrew, just in case there's something cool there. So let's go over here just for a second. Can you see it? Yes, you can. Right to left, right here, and Moses declared what? Jesus. Jesus Christ. And Moses declared Jesus Christ's feast. They're his feasts. They're all about him. They're for him, in him, through him, by him. Yes. So Moses declared God's feast, the um, Jesus Christ's feast. Yod Hey Vav Hey. Remember, he's telling us exactly who he is. Almighty God. He did, he gave him to the children. I just wanted you guys to see that. Mm -hmm. They awesome. are eternal. Forever, and we're going to be celebrating them the right why way. Why wouldn't he want us to start seeing them? Right, you know, like right. Just he's just like, hey, you know. Right. In the meantime. <laughs> in the meantime, yeah. Meanwhile. <laughs> meanwhile, learn this. <laughs> learn about my feast. And and I gotta say, the most fun way to learn about them, the one of the deeper ways, the fun ways, scriptural ways, go see Dr. Barry on Funny Bones because he describes every single feast. It's amazing. Now, then you go into the Word and you dig, 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 and the Holy Spirit gives you more, 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 yeah. right? That's how it's done. Okay. So that's what I have there. Now, from here, I hope you guys got that. So what we're saying, to sum this part up, I don't want to just scat across. We are in, or we're going to go over this in a second, but we're in the Feast of Tabernacles, okay? Uh, like the yeah, word says, uh, yes, yes, I'll go that later. But we're in there for seven days, and then on the eighth day is what we just described. Now, the eighth day, I, I almost forgot. I'm glad I made these idiot proof. I almost forgot to tell you about the eighth day. <laughs> People are watching us going, you know, this crazy guy, he said the eighth day, and then he didn't even tell us about the eighth day. Here's the eighth day. Okay, this is why I'm so excited about the eighth day. So, they did the whole celebration for seven days, and on the eighth day, the, that, that scripture right there said, a solemn assembly, that's how it described the eighth day. In Leviticus 23, here's how the eighth day is described. It says, on the eighth day, you shall have a mikra. A mikra, we've heard that a lot of times. We shall have a mikra. It's the Hebrew, Strong's word, 4744, mikra. It means a calling together, a sacred assembly. Remember, I'm a Gentile. We're, we're just Gentiles. We're learning this. So a mikra from the Hebrew, is a calling together in a sacred assembly. Okay, so the first thing that, the, that on the eighth day is, is a mikra. And then it says, and it will be holy. But the word is used, it says, and it will be kodesh. So you're going to have a mikra, and it will be kodesh. And that's the Hebrew word 6944. So what is kodesh? Obviously, it's holy, but what I thought was interesting, it's also an apartness or set apart, a separateness or a taking unto Almighty God. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying? I'm getting nutty. Okay, I'm a squirrel. I'm getting nutty. Okay, here we go. Now, so first thing, so it will be a mikra. It will be a kodesh, and then it will be. I didn't put the Hebrew word here because I'm gonna. I'm gonna we gotta paint this picture. It is an offering by fire. Mm. Now we all know. Well, I hope you guys know. But if you look at like Enoch, and you look at like um, um, the, the, the prophet. <laughs> Why can't I remember his name? Elisha and Elisha. When Elisha left, the it was that fiery, fiery chariot, right? And <laughs> in the end times, what's gonna happen? The world will be destroyed in fire. Everything that's going to happen pretty as soon as we're gone is all fire, 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 right? We were, it was destroyed first. The earth was destroyed first by water and last by fire. Let's go read Peter. It's in there. So, on the eighth day will be an offering of and by fire. So, us fired. <laughs> That'd be awesome. You're fired, which means we're out of here. Okay. Now. You're fired. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Keep her on. I can't do a video without her. Okay, so that was so a mikra, a kodesh offering by fire, and also it will be an atz. Whoa, whoa, atzera, atzera, which is a Hebrew six one one six. It means 
a sacred festive meeting, a festival celebration. <laughs> Not a merry festivus like in Seinfeld, but a but a festival celebration. So it's going to be a, a mikra. It's going to be a, a sacred assembly. It's going to be a separation. It's going to be an offering by fire. It's going to be a sacred festival celebration. I don't know. And then in the last thing it says, and the last thing it says about day eight, it says, and you shall rest. No work. You shall rest. Now, if we put all of that together, I don't know about you or you, but I think that sounds like a jubilee. All of our debts and captivity and uh, are canceled and we're out of here. I'm just saying, I'm giving a prophetic picture. I'm human. I'm going to make this, we have some new subscribers. In my uh, ways of life, everyone has an opinion. Opinions are like armpits. Everybody has two and they both stink. Okay, so this is my opinion to what I'm seeing in the Word of God. If we go or not go on that day, this is the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days and on the eighth day, it's everything that we just went over. That is the Word of God. I see it and I go, it looks like a harpazo moment. It, it, it looks like a harpazo moment. Okay? Okay. Go ahead. Let's go to the next. Okay, let me take I, a I drink. Got, I got something to show you. She's got something to show us. Okay. Here we go. October is an interesting month. October as far as astrology. As uh, far uh, as astronomy. astronomy. The sun, moon, and the stars. Yes. Astronomy, the study. If we're, looking, if we're looking for signs. Here we go. You ready? Yeah. I hope this works. I, I hope this works. We'll see. Now, remember, shh. October 2023 is a month full of rare and interesting astronomical events. Here are some of the highlights. October 2nd, close approach of the Moon and Jupiter. They'll appear close together in the night sky. October 6th, camelopardalid meteor shower with close to 5 meteors per hour. October 9th, dragonid meteor shower with up to 10 meteors per hour. October 14th, annular solar eclipse. The moon will cover the face of the sun, making it look like a ring of fire. Okay, that's it for that. Yeah. I saw you say something about October 6th or something you were looking at. Well... It's a meteor showers and stuff like that? No, the, um, the second, on the second, which is tonight. Oh, yeah, tonight. Is the Jupiter and the moon. Right. And I was under the impression, since we've been learning about... You God's teach us. Science, right, you teach us. That Jupiter represents Jesus. Okay. The moon represents the bride. Okay. Remember, Joseph had a dream, and the moon was his. Right, mother. right, right, right. Absolutely, yeah. I so, got you. Right. Anyway, right. and then, um, and so they are close together. Like it looks close. Right, like they're kissing on on Solar. It looks like, like a kiss. Right, it looks like a kiss. It does. It does. Yeah. Look like if a kiss. you look in at the Virgo. Right. The moon makes another lap, right. and it comes through the Virgo again. So, and it's a, that's around. Um, the time frame of this, which right. is, so the moon is coming in. Is this the moon? So now this is, the, the, yes, the, the, the moon, the, the moon is going to go in front of the sun. Right. Okay. There on goes. October 14th. Right. And can I tell you where it's at? And that's going to, the ring of fire right. is going to appear on the hand, the wedding hand of the virgin, the bride. Yes. In the stars, in the stars, uh, uh, Spica, around that star, in the Virgin, yes. this eclipse is going to happen. On her finger. On her finger, on October, the night of October 14th, going into the 15th. Yes, yes. So, okay, so so look at this. The, Go ahead. Tonight, they're at their closest, which is Jupiter and the moon. Okay. Okay, and then she makes another lap around, and she comes through the Virgin again. Okay. And she crosses over the sun. Okay. Another wedding kind of moment. Right, 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 right. Okay, okay, Where okay. a ring is presented. I got you, I got where, you, I got you. Okay, and now, if you look, if you go to your calendar. Okay, you want to go there now? The, um, 8th, like okay. he's talking about the 8th so day. So, we're, here's, here's Feast of Tabernacles, mm -hmm. okay, so the 15th day of the 7th month, we, okay, so for 7 days, right here, from moon to moon here, they celebrate, and then the 8th day, uh, October 7th, the 22nd okay. day of Tishri. That's the eighth day that we just right. said, that big right. celebration. Whack day, wham! Okay, okay so go ahead. That's huge. Now that's that. the celebration. Okay, now, now one seven of the things days that, that we don't know how right. long, once we are up in the clouds, we have how no long idea. we are there. Yep. And if you look at, okay, 
Here's just a thought. Here's, I'm give, not, okay, we're this human. This is not biblical. Give us a thought. But there are some ideas out there that are biblical that can kind of give you an idea. Well, let's so see. I thought how interesting that um, the kiss comes mm -hmm. the wedding ring comes okay. is there a wedding and then the lord says go down and get guests for oh the wedding. i see what you're saying that there we always thought that is there a display of a wedding okay. right something in the display. Clouds? we don't know we don't know i don't know so okay. anyway go ahead <clears throat> can, can, I, can i okay anyway there's a wedding going on somewhere <laughs> scripturally speaking okay um, all these different things where, you know, where Noah goes in right. for seven days and, you know, the, uh, Abraham got a seven day warning before Lot goes out. All those different sevens before the warnings and all that. And then the extraction right. of the people of God. Okay. <clears throat> so if you go from the the eighth day that we've been talking about right here, which is October 7th, and you go seven days. It's okay, when the ring. When the ring is being presented. Eclipse. Right. The eclipse where the ring goes on her finger. Now, what if, again, just what, let's play a what if game. Because even Repo Man talks about this, and others talk about this, okay? Where um, in the Bible, now I, I, I've researched this a lot of times. It says, the voice of God, the trump of God, the dead in Christ rise first. That's a given. Bam. They get their ticket. Boop, they're up. Now, imagine that, first of all, graves, known and unknown graves all over the planet, all over the planet, explode open. Why? Because a body's coming out. Someone's coming out. Okay. In Christ, they rise. Now, nowhere does it give a time frame. It says after that, that um, those of us that are alive and remain. Okay, well, we qualify if we're alive when the rapture happens. Okay, so alive and remain will be caught up with them, right, to be. And then the only part, the only part, the only part, can I say that enough? that says twinkling of an eye, or at that moment, at a blink, 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 whatever, is when we are transformed. When we go from corruption to incorruptible, when we go from mortal mm -hmm. to immortality, that happens at a blink of an eye. Our old wineskin gets blown off at a twinkle of an eye, so we can be <coughs> in the presence of Almighty God. Right, right. Okay, so when all this is happening, and the earth is shaking, and the darkness, and all of that, and then everything that's going on, and, and who knows what with the war, and I'm just we're throwing it all on the table right now. Mm -hmm. We're going to put it all on the table. When all of that's going on, and, and all hell is breaking loose at the same time, because Satan's coming down, and we're going up, that is a display. That is not what we've seen in the movies where I'm talking to you, and all of a sudden, where'd Lori go? Wow, what just happened? What? No. <laughs> it's going to be quite a I, <laughs> Listen, we in Christ, we're here a trumpet. We're going to hear his voice. My people know my voice. The world, the people in the world system are going to hear something so terrifying. It's, you see what I'm saying? They're going to know something's up. They're not going to say, I wonder what happened. Now, the, the world, the, the system, the enemy, the Satan, he will give the lie, right? And yes, that's going to happen. But they're going to know something happening. Anyway, so imagine the seven-day gap of maybe gathering well, guests, you know, maybe things Noah happening. Too, he was in the ark That's for what seven I'm saying. days. That's what I'm saying. And then the Lord shut the door and it started right. raining. And then, and I, oh, we disappeared in the camera, but I think we're still recording. So listen, there, there, there has to be, because scriptural talks about also that um, God says, where are the guests? And so, oh, they're here. No, no, no. I want, I want this place full. We've, we've discussed this before in detail. But remember that story where God's telling his servants, the angels, go get the guests. And they go a couple. And we did. We went, no, go, go uh, highways and byways. Now go get everyone that wants to come. No matter, I don't care what they look like, act like, smell like. I don't care. I want them because I want my place full. When does that happen? What if that happens during this seven-day gap? Let's just... Leave it at that. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> Okay. You know. It's all up in the air, but that's what we're saying. Now, anything else you want to talk about here? Like, I know Enoch's calendar is coming. I, I, I'm not saying we follow Enoch's calendar. Okay. I have to point out one more Please thing. Please point out something. Okay. So, let me see the cursor first. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can you see the cursor? So, go like, ahead. right here is where the October eclipse 14th, happens. The ring and the finger. And can I marriage. just say this right here is me and Pete's anniversary. 35 years. 35 years. October 15. We were married in 1988. That will be our 35th year. When that ring in the sky has been put on, I'm like, baby, <laughs> that's your ring, baby. So. If I could buy a ring, I'd buy that ring right there. <laughs> 
Anyway, yeah. that's our anniversary. So what we're praying for is that we're going to have our anniversary in the yeah, kingdom. Awesome. In the kingdom. That's what we're hoping for. Now, I'm not going to get into it now, but our marriage, our life together has been one prophetic picture after another, after another. And we'll maybe someday we'll tell you in the kingdom. It's beautiful. Anyway, it is God so this is, speaking to us. This is kind of us. blowing our mind. It is blowing our mind. The whole wedding theme. Also, right I just there. wanted to say at the same time frame as the eclipse is happening, mm. The, the moon continues to move right there. The child is there in the constellation. Yeshua is still there. That's right. The that's right. That's right. The moon, it goes behind, below her feet. It's all there in around right. the 15th. And it can, like, you can, you can go and look at the dates. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you can out for yourself. see how it goes through there. But it's beautiful. Now, I don't know how to display the story we as well as every, everybody else. I don't know how to do that. So I couldn't, I wasn't able word? to show you. We're stellarium illiterates. <laughs> anyway, listen. It's all Greek to me. It's all Greek and Hebrew to me. Now, I do want to say something because some people are actually tracking the, the um, Enoch calendar. Okay. Right. Now, they're saying October 3rd is a big, big day in the Enoch calendar and the scripture, I believe it's Enoch 60, where it talks about pretty much the whole picture is a picture of a rapture. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like a harpazo moment. It's a shaking. It's a sh The whole heaven and earth is shaking. It's a, it's shaking. a beautiful thing. Well, that happens somewhere right on there on Enoch's calendar, which is October 3rd. Of course. Oh, now code, code. Okay. The big R company, a uh, company, the big R country, right? Red. Big R country. Okay, they're doing um, uh, um, a oh my gosh, a drill for the first time that's going to cover the entire land, all 11 time zones in their country, and it's going to be like if they're under nuclear attack and they're having martial law. What? And that's happening on October 3rd, and then October 4th, everybody's going to get messages saying how certain people love us a lot. They and so they're going to tell us. They're going to say, guys, we're just telling you all that we love you so much. Here's a little buzz. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to say it like that because it's just too crazy for words that all these things are happening at the same time. And all the things are, you know. Right. Go ahead. And that, and that we drew our cards that night. Oh, my gosh. The alarm went off. Oh, oh, oh that's right. And scared been, the yeah. Jesus out of us. I know you don't have any idea what we're talking about right now. But go look at our other videos when, we, yeah, when God gave us the revelation videos. in... November 12th, 2021, that he was coming. Mm -hmm. And it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Anywho, do you have anything else? Because I think that's, uh, oh, 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 oh. I do want to say this. Mm. Do you have anything? Oh, I don't think so. Okay. On the top, okay, okay. Please, 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 please don't give up on prayer. If you're giving up on prayer, then it maybe you don't understand what prayer actually is. It's not just asking God for things and believing that he's going to do it. It is our way of communication. We, it is our relationship. Prayer is our relationship. It is our communication with God. He's always with us. He never leaves. He doesn't go away. Like You know how some people, they, they pray, oh, God, please come. And I don't mean the, the rapture, please come. I mean, come, let me, you know, come here to be with us now. God doesn't go and go like that. That's not God. Prayer is a relationship with Almighty God. He communicates in all our physical senses and, and all of our spiritual senses. It is communication. It's a practice of faith. Yes, and you walk it out. Now, all of us around the globe that are in Christ are going through trials and tribulations. Some are facing death, starvation, uh, no resources, no homes, no living quarters. Everything. They're everything. Okay, all of us. Every, everywhere. That doesn't mean that you give up on God and you say, well, God, forget it. Or you think, well, God, my prayer doesn't matter because you're going to do whatever you want anyway. So I, I'm going to say, forget it. If that's you, pay attention. The prayers of the righteous avail much. That is scripture. If God didn't mean it, he wouldn't have put it in there. If God didn't want us to engage in communication with him, he would have said, you know what, guys, I got this. Just forget it. I'm going to do it on my own. He needs us. He wants mm -hmm. us. He loves us. We're going through hell, but we're not of hell. We're of heaven. We're of him. We're in hell, this world, but we're not of this world. Mm -hmm. So we're okay. God has us. Okay. Now, 
I just had to say that. I had to say that. Be encouraged. Don't give up. Don't give up. God is, yeah. he's coming. He's on his way. He is, he's, he's here. He's, he's, he's everything you need. He'll supply all your needs. He'll take care of every battle you have. The victory is yours. The battle is his. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. We got it. Be encouraged. We're all getting slapped around. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Anything else you want to say? We're right on time. No, I'm just... You just take it all in, baby? Yeah, I'm encouraged because yesterday I was not encouraged. Right. I was, Go ahead. You know, it was Go a ahead. down day, and I was just like, oh, you know, sometimes you just see all the darkness going on, right. and it's very frustrating. Right. It's hard to watch your country die. I mean, yeah. that's not easy to, no, to it's see. No, it's not. I'm and, you know, it's like uh, someone would just posted a video of, Right between Arizona and California, nine dollars a gallon. Of oh, gas. whoa! And um, you know, it's I, I, it's everything's it, expensive it, now. It's getting weird. I take my mom yeah. to go shopping because she can't shop on her own. I shop with her. She, now talk about pension pennies. She doesn't spend money, and even she can't find. She's go. Everything's out of control. Everything's expensive. Everything is nuts. Yeah, it is crazy. But God has us. Mm -hmm. Be encouraged because, again, we are looking to Jesus Christ. We're not looking to the world. We're not looking to how things are. Remember faith? We learn faith. It's finished in Christ. It's finishing here. Our faith is in him. It is from him. It is him. It's Jesus Christ. And he gives it to us so that we can receive his grace through his faith because it's nothing of our works, so we can't brag. It is all a free gift of God. That is how we get in. He washes us with his blood. He cleanses us inside and out, and he separates us from sin. Yes, so that we are righteous because of him. He puts his righteousness yes. in us. Yes, we have his blood over our forehead. Yes, and cover. I and see myself so as he covered. Passes over yes, he passes over us. Oh. And now he's going to come take us. Yes. Let my people, people go. go. <laughs> All right. Tell the people. Tell the people. Tell the people. Tell the people. Goodbye. We're going to see we you, guys, you guys, guys in the clouds. We love you. Grab it someone. Be, crazy. be kind. Rewind. Love one another. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Adios, guys. We love one another and we love you. Bye bye. <laughs>